Hello, my name is Daniel Clark and I'm working with Gavin Hudgens from the Southern Methodist University and we're doing a time series analysis for U.S. and Arizona COVID-19 cases. We had previously done an exploratory data analysis of the COVID data, um, which you can see at the link is below. Um, but here, we, but as a reminder, we explored two databases, one being Johns Hopkins, the other being the COVIDTrackingProject.com, which we used to gather and organize our data from May 4th to July 21st. Here's a quick view of the database, some of the variables that we have within our, for us to use, um, with specific, with most important being positive increase as well as total test results increase, which we kind of use mostly throughout our, throughout our modeling. Here we want to take just a quick look at an overview of the U.S. data. Uh, many of the key features, these are just a few that were hand-selected from the attribute table that you looked at earlier, kind of the ones that we thought were important. In particular, importance are the positive increase and the total test increase numbers, because it's these two numbers, positive increase divided by total increase, which gives us the positive percentage, which is shown here, and this is the attribute that we used for most of our forecasting. And here you can see at Arizona, we use the exact same clean methodology here. Um, we had 180 total observations. And we can see the daily increase in positive is positives as well as total tests, um, which we divided to create positive percentage for Arizona. So next we'll do a univariate analysis where we're forecasting positive percentage um, nationwide as well as Arizona statewide. Here you can see the two realizations next to one another. You can see Arizona is a little bit later in spiking as compared to the U.S. Yes, and we also see the wandering behavior captured uh, by the dampening autocorrelations, and they both have similar spectral densities. Looking at the U.S. data, univariate modeling, Again, here's a look at our positive percentage data. Running AIC selects an ARMA 2.2. Here's a look at the formula for that model. And AIC calculations and forecasts. A shorter term 10 back and a 20 back. AIC calculations come out at 3.4 and 2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth respectively. And the mean AIC on a rolling window at 2.3 times 10 to the negative fourth. So that's kind of our baseline. We also put in a non-stationary one minus B component to account for the wandering. And uh, the plot on the left shows the transformed realization. Plot on the right shows details of that transformed realization. And we ended up with an ARIMA 210. Here's a look at that uh, model and the ASC calculations on that. The lowest ASC calculation that we got was a 3.5 times 10 to the negative 5. There on the left, that was for uh, right off the end of the model, but on a rolling window, comes up at 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4th. Finally, we also added in some seasonality and with an S equals 7 component on top of the 1 minus B component and the, the uh, transformation on your right, that's the final transformed realization, ended up with an ARIMA 910 and here's the ASC calculation on that at 7.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. So in Arizona, we did this exact same methodology. Here's our positive percentage realization as a reminder. Um, here's our stationary forecast, which our AIC selected in ARMA 1.1 model, as well as here's the, here's the model here with our, for review. And here's our 20-day look back window um, using our respect, as well as our ASC, respective ASC score. We can see it's trending back towards the mean, which is interesting. Next, we did a state. We did a non-stationary forecast where we difference based off a trend. Um, our AIC selected a an ARIMA 210 model, um, which you can see the formula below, and it gave us the 20 behind forecast here, which um, as a as a in comparison to the um, actual realization, which you can see is the ASC score, the respective ASC score here. And then thirdly, we included an airline model, which tr which which difference based on the trend as well as a seven day seasonality. Um, and here's our respective AI ASC calculation for the um, airplane model, as well as the formula that it outputted for us 
and here's the ASC score. So that was our univariate. Next, we went into a multivariate analysis. Okay, so we are still predicting against positive percentage for both the U.S. and Arizona. Looking at the U.S. multivariate analysis, we did a VAR model. I actually did three um, using uh, doing analysis of positive percentage using total test results increase and positive test results increase. Did the stationary, the trend, and then the airplane model as well. And here are the results and the ASCs for those. Uh, 2.8, 1.7, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3. Not as low as some of the other models we've seen previously. So for Arizona, we did the exact same thing, uh, which we used total test results and positive test results increase, as well as three bar models being stationary, stationarity, trend, and airplane. And here are our short-term and long-term forecasts, as well as their respective ASC scores using the VAR model. And then thirdly, we, um, we enacted a neural net model within, with uh, Arizona in the US. Um, here we can see our neural net model produced a short-term and long-term forecast on the bottom left, um, as well as our respective ASC scores. And then we included our best performing neural net as well as our best performing VAR model. Um, in combined to create a short-term and long-term forecast in the middle, which you can see the respective ASC scores. And then we did the exact same method on the U.S. data. You can see the neural network design diagrams there with the forecast, both short-term and long-term, and the ensemble models with the ASC calculations for the U.S. data. So in summary, we we actually ran eight different models for both the nationwide as well as statewide data. Um, interestingly, both from a univariate standpoint, the ARIMA model was the most preferred. Um, the ARIMA 2.1 model was even more surprising with the both with the both ARIMA models were 2.1 um, zero models. Um, but looking at the multivariate models, the VAR trend was the best for Arizona as well, but the MLP was the best for the U.S. Um, and one caveat here is that the um, within the rolling windows we had really similar results. However, however, our rolling windows tended to favor the stationary models just a little bit more. So this was our forecast for both the U.S. and Arizona um, with regards to positive percentage. Thank you very much, and let us know if you have any questions.